Building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, part 14. Time has come for the first steam test of the almost complete boiler plant on the bench. And why am I stood at my lathe making something when this is supposed to be a steam test? Well, I need to make a gas adapter. This is a simple pipe extension to allow me to use a piece of silicone rubber to attach the gas supply to the burner. While I'm turning this simple piece of brass, I'll take this opportunity to just mention that this is a health and safety warning regarding the use of a flexible silicone rubber pipe to connect a gas burner to the gas valve that fits onto the gas canister. I don't think you should do this. It's probably much better piping it up in copper using union nuts and cones and doing the job properly. But this is only a steam test and besides which it's very, very convenient for me to do it this way. And if I get a gas leak and the whole system blows up and blows the garage door off, then the potential for a viral video will compensate somewhat for my pain and suffering and all of the time I'll have to spend in the hospital being repaired. So as I said, the first job that I'm doing is turning this piece of brass hexagon to make an adapter that fits on the burner. The trouble is, this brass is very soft and far too much of the brass is sticking out of the chuck. And this, coupled with the fact that the cutting tool is fairly blunt, means that the brass just moves out of the way of the cutting tool, so you get a tapered shaft. Now I don't want this, I need it to be parallel. And as you can see, the finish on the shaft is dreadful. I'm doing this on purpose. Before any experts write in, I'm doing it for the purposes of the tutorial video. This clip shows me centre drilling the end of the brass, and now I'm going to use my live centre to support it while I turn the rest of it, and this time I'm going to do it more carefully. I still use the same blunt cutting tool, I do need to change that, but this is not a high tolerance component, so a little bit of roughness on the actual brass will be okay to grip the piece of silicone rubber pipe. This is a good tip. Quite a lot of the sensors that we have are quite useful, and hearing, for me particularly, has been very useful being a musician, but it's also useful for hearing when the tool is blunt, and if you listen to this, you will hear the squeaking, which is a sure sign that you're using a blunt cutting tool. Have a listen. I'm using the Auto Traverse to cut this piece of bar as well. If I was doing it by hand, I would feel resistance from the brass because this tool really is very blunt. At the moment, I'm cleaning up the hexagon end of the bar. What I thought I would do next is create some grooves in the brass. These grooves serve no other purpose than to hold the pipe in place, but really, silicone rubber pipe is fine on a plain shaft, especially as I am using butane and not propane to fire the boiler. Butane is a very low pressure gas, and it's okay even without a regulator. If you decide to use propane for firing your boilers, which I don't recommend, then you need a regulator because propane in the tank is at a very high pressure. For firing my steam plants, I normally would use a camping gas cylinder. And that's not a mispronunciation, it's spelled G-A-Z. Why do I use a camping gas cylinder? Well, it's a convenient size to take out into the garden. It's not too big and bulky or heavy. Alternatively, you could use the type of canisters that are normally fitted to portable picnic stoves. These are a bit more expensive and they're a 70%, 30% butane propane mix. But they work out a bit more expensive and I would only use them for a portable steam plant such as in a model boat. I know this episode is about a steam test but I have to make this part before I can do the steam test. And I'm really sorry about this so I've speeded it up and now it's going to go much faster. I've drilled the hole down the centre, I'm profiling the end of the brass to make it look pretty and parting it off. All I need to do now is drill and tap the other end a quarter by 40 threads per inch. So I've turned the piece round in the chuck and here I'm cleaning off the end. It's always a good idea to face the end before doing any drilling. The rest of this is routine. You've seen it many times before if you watch these videos regularly. First of all I centre drill the hole. Then I drill it 7 30 seconds of an inch. And 7 30 seconds of an inch is tapping size for a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap. And it's also two imperial drill sizes down from a quarter of an inch. And in case you're wondering why I mark the drill with a felt tip pen, it's so that I know how far the drill is going to go into the piece of brass. I only need the drill to go in as far as the end of the hexagon part. 
This clip shows me threading the part using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap. After which I can fit the adapter to the gas burner. I use some Loctite 542 to seal the threads to make sure there are no leaks. And here I'm wiping off the surplus Loctite 542 with a cloth. And all I need to do now is attach a suitable piece of silicone rubber pipe, first of all to the burner, and then to the gas adapter that fits on the gas tank. If this was going to be a permanent installation, I would use some cable ties to hold the silicone rubber in close contact to the adapters. But I'm not going to do that just for this simple steam test. And now, hardly able to contain my excitement, I use my flexible gas lighter that I bought myself for Christmas to light the burner. And all I have to do now is wait, but rather than just sit about doing nothing, I thought I would make the effort and fill the water tank to make sure it doesn't leak. In what seems a remarkably short time, I have a very small amount of pressure showing on the gauge. So I'll just open the steam valve and have a look at it. Yes, that's definitely steam or water vapour and a lot of water coming out of the pipe. So far so good. At least I know the steam turret works. It's time now to test the whistle. And if you look on the pressure gauge, as you can see, there's so little pressure showing there, yet I still get a bit of a blow from the whistle. Now that there's about 25 pounds per square inch showing on the pressure gauge, it's time to test the injector. And the procedure is, open the water valve fully, then open the steam valve, followed by slowly closing the water valve, very slowly in fact sometimes, until the injector picks up. When you first open the water valve, with the steam valve closed, the water runs into the bottom tank, just by gravity. But when you open the steam valve, suddenly a lot more water comes out of the pipe. And the good news is, the injectors picked up straight away, which I didn't expect to happen. It's time, I think, to temporarily hook up the steam engine, because I need the steam engine to use the water that's in the boiler, so I can perform a repeat test on the injector. I could, of course, just leave the boiler running with the safety valve blowing off, but this safety valve makes such a horrible noise, I think I can bring myself to live without listening to that. I'd rather listen to and watch the steam engine working. So now it's just a waiting game until the water level drops, then I can test the injector again. What I could do, I suppose, is just focus the camera on the water gauge whilst the steam engine is running and wait until the water level starts to drop. I don't want to send any viewers into a coma, so I won't do that. Instead, I'll show the steam engine and the exhaust pipe is being held in front of the camera for the maximum steam effect. And eventually the water level drops. And in this clip, once again, I opened the water valve first, fully, then I opened the steam valve about halfway, and I'm backing off the water valve, but there's a problem. The injector is not picking up. It's just simply filling up the bottom tank right to the top. The design of this tank is quite ingenious, even though I do say so myself. The bottom tank accepts the water from the overflow pipe of the injector, and with the steam valve opened, this water is warm and as the hand pump is fed by the lower tank, the hand pump will be pumping water that is already warm into the boiler. And to make things even better, this water will also go through the economizer, which is in the condenser, and makes it so that the water is much hotter by the time it reaches the boiler. So I shouldn't get too much of a pressure drop if I use the hand pump, but I need to use the injector. That's the whole point of the exercise, and this injector is not playing at all. I'm quite pleased that the injector doesn't work, I know why it's not working, and the next video that I'll be posting will be an in the workshop video talking about injectors. A few experts have already commented telling me how injectors work, as if I didn't know, but anyway, in this next episode that I'm doing, I'll be telling you how they work and talking about common problems that you get with injectors. But for the moment, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.